All right, well, that wraps up the trading day. It looks like the Dow is going to eke out gains just around the flat line, oh, wow. less than a point. I guess we can call it a win we'll take after it. the last couple of days. S&P closing down about two tenths of a percent. NASDAQ, once again, the underperformer off just about a half of a percent. We want to bring in Melissa Brown, Contigo Managing Director of Applied Research. We also have Ryan Payne, Payne Capital Management President and Pain Points of Wealth a podcast host. Great to have you both here joining the show. Ryan, help us break down what we saw today, lack thereof, action maybe more broadly speaking, if you take a look at the overall numbers, but the selling that we've seen recently, how that sets us up. What's your big takeaway? Yeah, I think first off, we had a huge move in the market the last two months. So I think, you know, bottom line is in the Dow was up like 20% in two months. I'll take that for a year return. Um, so we saw a huge rebound from the bottom there. And I think you're getting a little bit of profit taking in here. Uh, all of a sudden, every bank has gone very negative on the market at the same time. Investor sentiment has, has gone like, kind of dire as well. So I would actually argue that's probably setting up for a pretty positive end of the year uh, when sentiment gets that low. Um, and the fact that you know, all year so far, the economic data has been pretty good. It has been very negative, Melissa. In particular, as Ryan said, those bank CEOs, one after the other, forecasting some sort of recession early next year. Does this set us up for a positive end of the year? Well, I, I, I hope so, although I'm not quite as confident as, as Ryan. Um, I think we've seen very low trading volume. And so I think any news, um, we're going to see a, a bigger than expected reaction. So if the news continues to be good, yeah, then we could have an, a nice end of year rally. But if we start to get a little um, more negative news, maybe you know the next bank coming out with a negative viewpoint, um, on that low trading volume, we could see a much bigger downturn than we might otherwise see if volume had been higher. Ryan, the recent economic data points, it seems like at least it's trending in the right direction. All points, all, I guess, signals point to inflation cooling just a bit. Jobs market, though, still remains relatively resilient. How do you square all this up in terms of what this likely means for Fed policy at the next couple of meetings? Well, I think bottom line is the Fed has to be data dependent, which is an overused phrase. But I mean, if you look at it, right, oil prices, I mean, man, we're down to close to $70 a barrel now uh, on oil, which is just a huge decline, which is... That, that feeds into everything in the economy, right? So that's very disinflationary. Lumber costs down 60% now. A uh, housing market at this point is starting to plummet. So I think the Fed has already pretty much set the stage to start to not only you know, taper what they were doing before, but also stop raising rates here soon. Melissa, what is ahead from the Fed and what could be the catalyst to get things moving in the other direction? Is that CPI data next week? Well, you know, the CPI data um, uh, will certainly be important, but, you know, we've been looking at a year of, you know, higher prints. Um, it's going to take a long time for that year over year inflation number to actually come down, even if we see flat inflation on a month over month basis. And so I think it's something that the market, or that investors are still going to be watching very closely. Um, to make sure we don't, I think they'll, they might overreact to even a slight uptick if the number comes out a little higher than expected. But, you know, as Ryan was noting, uh, with that decline in oil prices, that's probably, um, there's probably a lower chance of that happening. Ryan, how does this set us up then for just in terms of investment opportunity, where you're thinking about buying right now as we do head into the new year, domestic versus international? What makes the most sense? Yeah, well, I think international has already bottomed. Uh, mm -hmm. If you look at like China, they've had a huge bottom already. Um, you're starting to see the dollar weaken, which as a U.S. investor, that's great when you're buying overseas. Valuations are cheap overseas. We've already factored in that we have an energy crisis. And if you look at actually, hard to believe, but the FTSE 100, your U.K. stock market is actually positive for the year. Who would guess that? So I think global markets are recovering. I have money overseas as well here, and I probably wouldn't overweight tech. The winners of the last 10 years probably won't be the winners of the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. Melissa, just wanted to follow up on you mentioning that downward move in oil, given the price caps, given the EU sanctions, will it continue? And, and to follow up, you also say stocks are moving less on their own characteristics. What are they moving on and what does that tell you? Well, yeah, so when, when I say that, I mean that stocks have become more and more correlated with each other, so they tend to be moving in the same direction. And by the way, stocks and bonds have become more correlated as well, as have um, stock markets and the dollar. Um, uh, so, um, you know, I think that suggests that investors are 
looking at the bigger inflation picture. Oil is going to impact, um, you know, many, many different types of stocks. And they're looking at that more than saying stock A looks better than stock B, you know, in terms of earnings. But, um, you know, they've lowered their expectations for uh, fourth quarter earnings. Um, that we still have a while uh, before we have to start worrying about that, but that is something. Um, also, I think that over the next month, we'll we'll start seeing whether earnings are in fact coming in lower. Ryan, take a look at small caps. Like you said, maybe the outperformance will come from what we haven't seen over the last 10 years. Small caps outperforming, what, 30% cheaper, I should say, than large caps right now. The biggest discount that we've seen since the dot-com bubble. When you're drilling down, try to, trying to identify some of those names. What are you looking for? I mean, I'm like a kid in candy store. I mean, if you look at valuations outside of tech, out of disruptive technology, um, everything right now trades relatively cheap based on history. And I think if you look at the macro picture, look, I mean, we know inflation's coming down. We know the job market's going to remain hot. Wages are going up. So I think the U.S. economy should be strong. Um, I think small caps are a great way to play that. And I think overall, like, you don't have to be that smart here. I mean, interest rates have gone up, so the bond market looks good as well. And I talked about this on my podcast, Pain Points as well, one of the best financial podcasts in the country. Um, so I think right now it's just like you got to be in. Embrace the fact that we've got uncertainty here. Um, and I think everything's lining up right now for a pretty good rally across the board. Again, but just like spread out your risk because the market's giving you a lot of gifts here in terms of buying. And Melissa, what's the, the move in the yield telling you, in particular the 10 and the 2, and, and also the, the move in the dollar most recently? Well, the, you know, the 10 and the 2 inversion um, is the biggest it's been since 1981. Now, the good news in that is that starting in 1982, when the Fed started to lower rates, and I was around then, I hate to say it, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know, we did see a, you know, a multi, multi, multi-year rally. So, um, it could be a little pain in the short term, um, but um, hopefully, eventually, um, you know, if we do end up with some kind of soft landing, that could be good news. But for right now, I think we do need to keep our eyes out for that soft landing because that is a pretty, it's a very big inversion. Um, and as Ryan also mentioned, mentioned, the dollar is down well. I think that kind of volatility makes it difficult to negotiate. Um, where do you want to invest? You know, things keep changing so much. You might have positioned yourself for a higher dollar a month ago, and now you start, have to start selling. We haven't seen that yet, um, as I mentioned in the volume numbers, but uh, we could start to see that as well. People need to reposition for a different economic environment than they had been positioned for. All right, Melissa Brown, Ryan Payne, and thanks so much for joining us here this afternoon.